And hello YouTube, GTC26 here, and back by popular demand, I made another Japan video. And by popular demand, I mean literally only one person asked. Anyway, today I'm enlightening you all about the mythical lands of Japan even further than the last time. Okay, so in my original video I said the land of Japan doesn't exist, but what I failed to mention was that there was a point in time when it did exist. That's what today's video is about. So, without further ado, let's get started. So we're starting all the way back to the events directly following Noah's Flood from the Old Testament. That means we're starting with prehistoric Japan, which was before even 30,000 BC. Pangaea was just broken up due to the Flood, but Japan is still connected to the main world by four land bridges. The land bridges originated from Sakhalin Islands, or Sakhalin Island, Ryukyu Islands, Taiwan, and Korea. I apologize for my poor pronunciations, by the way. I just know the history, not the way to pronounce them. Anyway, the past were extremely foggy and seemed to go on forever. However, for four people, those bridges were their last hope. In, 100 B in 125,000 BC, BC, four exi exiled Satanists, who had become the founders of the Illuminati, were chased out of their civilizations, and they went across these land bridges to escape and hide. When the four of them all met in Japan, where the land bridges ended, they used their satanic dark sorcery to destroy three of the land bridges, keeping only the Korean bridge intact. They did this to save themselves from the slight chance that they may be followed. Like, you know, for people trying to kill them. They saved the Korean bridge, though, because, according to the Korean founder, they would occasionally send death row prisoners over that way, which the four planned on using to their advantage. Whenever the ancient Koreans did send criminals across the bridge, the four founders would change the convict's appearance with their sorcery and send them back to Korea as a spy for them. In 40,000 BC, though, one of the spies were exposed and the Illuminati was forced to destroy the final land bridge. Now, with all connections to the earth broken, the land would slowly drift away and toward hell. As they neared the depths of hell, Satan's beasts would be unleashed, unleashed upon the land. <clears throat> I need water. Anyway, the members of the Illuminati, now in the thousands after the Korean spies came back before the land bridge was destroyed and procreated with the founders, <coughs> They quickly crafted weapons using the edge ground axes to fend off the beasts, which archaeologists back in the medieval age found. Well, before it was destroyed, but we'll get to that later. There would be quickly be a war between the demons and the descendants of the four founders. Just as the human inhabitants of Japan were about to be completely wiped out, they decided to make a deal with Satan. Satan decided to stop the demons from attacking them if they proved their devotion to him. So they did. In 32,100 BC, they sacrificed a young girl at Yamashita Cave. Next, in 30,000 BC, they offered seashell artifacts at Sakatari Cave. Finally, they sacrificed countless people at Shia Shiraho Saunitabaru Cave in 27,000 BC. Now we move from Paleolithic Japan to Ancient Japan, starting with the Homan area which spanned from 14,000 BC to 1,000 BC. This time period was named after the pottery the ancient Japanese made to worship demi-demons, which I'll explain in a minute. The initial homen went from 14,000 BC to 4,000 BC and was quite calm. The ancient Illuminati members were sedentary, staying in their own territories so they didn't anger the demons. They were hunter-gatherer people, though, which caused a problem due to their prey and food source soon migrating into demon territory. This is where the early homen started, which lasted until 2500 BC. The Illuminati tribesmen sent select people to procreate with the demons, allowing them to enter their hostile territory. The half-breeds soon took deity-like authority over the Japanese mortals. In the middle homen, Ranging from 2500 BC to 1500 BC, the demi-demons started demanding worship, forcing their mortal neighbor neighbors to create idols to them with pottery, which came to be known as dogu. By now, a majority of the Japanese lived in pit houses, by the way. Um, just to give you, like, context. Finally, there's the late homen. 
going from 1500 BC to 900 BC, this was when the descendants of the spies sent to Korea returned, leaving behind only one family of spies, which they managed to make, er, well, okay, so earlier I said Korean spies returned, but some of them were trapped, um, they weren't exposed though, and then they finally came back through boats, and basically that's how they got back, but they left behind one family of spies, which they managed to ma manipulate the system of Korea and make them the royal family. The returning spies brought the Japanese new technologies, such as wet rice farming and metallurgy, or metallurgy, or however you pronounce it, of bronze and iron. These technologies would come to define the next era of Japan. However, there was also a sharp decline in the population of Japan. The demi-demons, now numbering in the hundreds, had went to war with one another for dominance because most evil beings strive for power and fight each other for it. At the end of this war, only one demi-demon remained. This survivor and victor was Emperor Jimu, Jimu, the first emperor of the land. He declared the land to be called Japan. After all that, we're just now reaching the Yayoi era period, which, which started in 900 BC and ended in 300 AD, which is when the spies and homan people emerged, um, like procreated and all that. With the increase of mortals, though, the demi-demon count rose once again, too. Jemu had 100 children before dying in 82 AD, and each offspring controlled one kingdom of Japan, which was currently known as Wa. As it happened before, the children of Jemu, Jemu had started a civil war, fighting for ultimate control over Wa or Japan. One demi-demon, the female monarch Himiko, returned to her roots and seeked help from Satan. With his help, she led her people, the Yamati Kingdom, to victory. Her kingdom became superior in 240 AD. And now that they had boats from the spies, um, brought to, yeah, um, of the Yuyoi period, the Japanese were able to travel to the known world. This is important because Himiko placed her younger brother as head of diplomatic affairs with the Chinese court of the Kingdom of Wei. The Kofun period, which began in 300 AD and lasted until 538 AD, was the beginning of the end for the land of Japan. It just led to events that would bring about the end of Japan. After Himiko and her brother died, the rulers of Japan would be buried in Kofun burial mounds surrounded by Haniwa clay warrior sculptures. They did this because they planned on fighting the demons and Satan one more time, but this time with them being prepared. That won't come to pass until much later, though. For now, in 250 AD, the Yamati, now known as the Yamato Court, ruled over Japan and had been steadily gaining power over the past decade. The Yamato Court had expanded through military con conquest, but they preferred to spread through bribery and diplomacy, knowing the new citizens would be more like willing to help in the afterlife war if they believed they had a choice. These local clans that joined were, were given authority as Uji, the Yamato clan had also greatly increased attention on Chinese relations by late 4th century. This was so that Japan could focus on their coming war with military uh, forces and not worry about material goods, which China would be supplying. These relations were emphasized by the five kings of Wa, San, Qin, Sai, Ko, and Bu. Above the Uji, the leaders of the main Yamato clan were the few descendants of Himiko, and therefore the only demi-demon still alive. Each of them began practicing the Shinto religion, knowing they would need supernatural help to fight Satan, of course, and they started worshipping clan spirits. Some people still pledged allegiance to Satan, though. These loyal members of the Illuminati would be exiled to eastern Hanshu, where all but ten of them would be hunted and killed by Prince Yamato Takeru. So we finally reached classical Japan, guys. Let's start with the Asuka period, which was 538 to 710. The beginning of the Asuka period was marked by Buddhism being introduced to Japan. The Soga clan, who are Buddhists, took control of Japan in 587. Due to Buddhists being in charge now, Satan noticed the Japanese were no longer following him. This led to Satan bringing the war sooner than the Japanese had planned or expected. He hadn't done it yet, though. He's doing that later. During the reign of Emperor Su Su Suiko, her nephew Prince Shotoko, or Shotoku, caught Satan's eye. He was a good man, having authored Jap Japan's 17 article constitution and establishing the cap and rank system. Knowing Shotoku wouldn't willingly help him, 
Satan disguised himself as Buddha and appeared to the prince in a dream. As Buddha, Satan said it was his will for Prince Shodoku to take his aunt's position, but that he must do so as instructed. Satan manipulated Shodoku until he subtly offended Japan or China in 607, which Satan wanted so that Japan would lose its allies. Later, Satan went undisguised to one of his loyal followers, Prince Naka no Oi, and told him to launch a coup d'etat against the Soga clan. Knowing he couldn't do it alone, Prince Naka no Oi went to Fujiwara no Kamatari, a man who hated Buddhism and was still Shinto, for help. He convinced Fujiwara to join him by telling him the defeat of the Soga clan would stop the spread of Judi Buddhism in Japan. So after a successful coup, Prince, Prince Naka no Oi and Fujiwara no Kamatari ruled, which led to the Taika reform. It began with land nationalization and taxation, then focused on strengthening the imperial court. Eventually, Prince Naka no Oi, who came to be known as Emperor Tenji, died. This led to the Jinchen War, beginning in seven, or 672. The Jinchen War was fought between Prince Oama, a Buddhist, and Prince Otomo, a Satanist. Oama won, but Otomo managed to sneak some non-Buddhists into the imperial system, which would come in handy later. From 710 to 794, the Nara period was a time of tragedy for the Jap Japanese. Their current emperor, Emperor Shomu, who, as I said, was a non-Buddhist, um, since he wasn't religious and didn't practice defense against Satan, that allowed Satan to wreak havoc upon Japan. Satan prepared for the war by weakening his enemy's forces, sending numerous natural disasters on the land, including wildfires, droughts, famines, and smallpox. He killed over a quarter of the Japanese population. Then, in the Heian period, which was 794 to 1185, Satan launched another attack of smallpox in 812 to 814, killing just under half the population of Japan. And we're finally nearing the end of Japan's time in this world, medieval Japan. It contained the Age of the Samurai, which started in 1185 until it was brought to an end in 1600. Satan was ready to launch the war. He would have sent his demons, but the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ had stopped them from physically entering the world. Without being able to send his demons, Satan gave his followers, the Illuminati, the magical powers of dark magic. The samurai, who were fighting for the mortals, fought the Illuminati for centuries. China, having forgiven Japan by now, were assisting the samurai. North Korea, having been influenced by the royal family of spies, was helping the Illuminati. While the land above was being ravaged by war, the armies from the Kofun period had begun fighting the demons in hell. Needless to say, they were quickly annihilated, though. The destruction, of the, war caused Jap the destruction from the war caused Japan to sink to the bottom of the ocean, inspiring the legend of Atlantis, of course. Only a handful of the Illuminati survived, and they went to North Korea to begin their inter international operations. China, on the other hand, had decided to cover up the destruction of Japan to hide their greatest failure. North Korea did so as well, though, to protect the Illuminati. So, that all seems hopeless. Um, though it all seems hopeless that, like, the Illuminati's gonna win and stuff, one samurai lived and escaped Japan. But that's a different story! Well, well, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the true history of Japan. If you want more content on this, drop a like below and please subscribe. I'm going to make more content about this anyway, though. Thank you all for watching. GTC 26 is out.